Come with me to the book of Acts, the eighth chapter. I'm going to look at verse four through eight. Acts, the fourth chapter, eighth chapter, <clears throat> verses four through eight. And I want you just to center in this message with me this morning. Uh, while we're minister again, but I'm pulling it from a different place uh, today. I think it's probably more relevant now than ever before. Acts eight four through eight. I'm looking at it from the New King James Version. It says, "Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word." Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes, which were once, which with one accord, heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits cried out, or cried with a loud voice, I'm sorry, came out of them who were possessed, and many that were paralyzed and lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. And all the people said amen. amen. Great joy in that city. My subject this morning, look at someone if you would like to do so and tell them no pain, no, pain. no, gain. no gain. No pain, no gain. It was Benjamin Franklin that I apologize that I didn't do too good in history growing up in high school. So. I thought Benjamin Franklin was a president, but he was not. You knew better than me, but I know he's on a $100 bill. <clears throat> One of the founding uh, uh, fathers of our, of our country is known for the statement of, 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 he was known for this statement, there is no gains without pains. Later it became no pain, no gain. As great as he was in all that he did, he left us that capture of thought to let us understand a little bit about life. No pain, no gain. In other words, there's a necessity in suffering and hard work in order to succeed in life. It's not just going to just happen to you. It has to take hard work. If any man or woman has a strong, driven personality and insists on succeeding and striving in life for better, you will be successful but it takes you to have a concerted effort to want to put forth your energy and work hard. When God is doing something here, when he is stretching you, he is stretching you and I in the physical sense and also in the natural sense, figuratively, to humble us, soften us, to bring about an experience, forcing us to experience new things. He stretches you every now and then, the Holy Spirit will stretch you. And to some, he stretch you even out your comfort zone, Julia. He stretches you out of what you normally are comfortable in doing. But this is for gain and for progress, for where there is no pain, there'll be no gain. Our story this morning shows us how God wants to work through people. And here in this text is Peter and, and John, Paul and John, I'm sorry that are working here to bring about something greater. But God is working through people against the powers of evil. The subject this morning lets us see the battleground of the universe is always Satan and the devil. It's always that side of the coin. And we cannot be on but one side or the other. It is clear if asked again, which side would you want to be on? Jesus' side or the devil's side? We all, I believe, majority would say, I want to be on the Lord's side. Because that is the winning side. In 1 Kings 18, 21, let me read this to you in, in the CSB, Christian Standard Bible, 1 Kings 18, 21. And Elijah approached all the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, the false god, follow him. But the people didn't answer him a word. They were on this place called Carmel, and they were caught between a decision of whether or not I'm going to serve Baal or I'm going to serve God. They were wavering, halting between two opinions. To serve God would be a greater sacrifice seemingly to them. To serve Baal seemed like the majority of the people were selling Baal worship. But you cannot halt a waver between two opinions. You must make a choice. Many of you made choices long time ago to follow the Lord. And you're looking at your life as it develops and macerate and grow 
and you're going, you've gone through some difficult challenges, probably even going through some right now, but that's all a part of growth. Because when you have great pain, you have also great gain. God does never put no more on us or more on us than we're able to handle. What you're going through right now, what you are experiencing, as painful as it is, look past the pain and see the reward. Because God is always a rewarder. He's a great rewarder. The text brings us on to the pain that brings the promise, the promise for those that were going to be delivered. It also shows about progress and great joy was in that city. So evidently, with the things that were happening in that city, there was no real joy. Demonic people, paralyzed people, sick people, people that needed a breakthrough. But Peter and them came down there and began to preach the word to them and change began to happen because of the word of God. It was moving from a stage called 2.0 taken to a new level, another, another exalted place in God. Moving requires no pain, no gain. Moving requires, again, I say, a, a, a wanting, a concerted effort to not stay in the same place, that I choose to move my life forward. Movement is a part of life. Mm. It links up with God's creation. Everything is moving. We're coming out of winter and we're coming into spring and then summer will come. I laugh with humor sometimes in the grocery store at the post office when people say, it's so cold. I said, just wait two more months. <laughs> You'll be thinking about this cold weather and this rainy weather because we know it's going to get real hot. But movement brings a different type of development when God begins to move you. When God begins to move, he starts working on creating character self-awareness, preparing you for where he wants you to be and where he's going to take you to. And God knows how to work on us and work in our lives and prepare us. Sometimes I think God's about to give me a, a bigger blessing than I can ever imagine because of the stuff he's working on and the way I'm going through it, the way I have to handle it. It's like, God, this must going to be a big one coming because what you're taking me through right now is like, good Lord, this, this is enough for me to just, uh, just retire, that word. But in this text, again, um, it was for them to get the gospel out. They had gotten hung up on being comfortable. As some Christians become comfortable, I'm saved and I'm, I'm not worried about anybody else in my family. I'm saved, I'm good. But Acts 1 and 8 gives us a clear picture. He says, you shall have power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So more was required of them than to just sit around Jerusalem waiting for the Lord to come back. And more is required of you just to just come and sit in these wonderful blue chairs and stream online. You should be in Calvary in the parking lot detail. Oh, let me take that out my notes right there. That ain't gonna, that didn't go over at all. That didn't go over at all, something. We become so comfortable in, in that place. Is it, I, I don't know, maybe it's a few people here. Um, after you pass the age 17, 18, you get comfortable in your parents' house because you don't have to pay any bills. But then that bill thing starts kicking on inside you and you start trying to get real quiet. You don't even come out your room. They don't even know you leave early in the morning, come back late at night. Like, they don't know you're still living there. But finally, dad or mom comes in and like, oh, 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 hello. You've been wanting to be ground all your life. This is your time right now. Go to college, go to the military, or get a trade. Whatever you do, get out. Go somewhere. Well, I'm not ready. I've been preparing you for 18 years. You should be ready by now. 18 years? Sure, you should be ready. You're, you're big enough. And you're taking some clothes with you, so you should be prepared. At the start from nothing. How many in here, by show of hands, ever gone to a Goodwill? How many, know what, do, how many do not know what a Goodwill is? Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> we used to go to the Goodwill with my mom, and I don't know why she would take the station wagon and park right in front, Connie. It's like, can we just <laughs> at least <laughs> park around the corner? We would walk in there and get our stuff for school and come back out. No, we're going to park right in front. 
Yeah, let you bring it out a whole lot of stuff. Come on, Mom. <laughs> Painful it was. So the message had to get out. The message they had to get out was the gospel. They could not stay in this comfort, comfortable place. They had to go and scatter this gospel out into all the world. Acts 8 and 1, he says, therefore, and anytime you see in therefore, or, or, or you see uh, but to single junction, therefore is a reflection of what he's already been stated, a few things I just went over. But this, therefore, goes back to the seventh chapter, and the last three verses particularly are the most of there. Stephen here was the young man that was being stoned because he was a faithful moderator, calling on the name of the Lord and believing in Jesus. Paul here, I'm sorry, I used him in another text, but Peter, Paul was the one here that was bringing pressure on the church, bringing havoc on the church. And because of this, the Bible says in Acts 8 and 1, that therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. At first it was comfortable in Jerusalem, but here comes this pain to bring gain. They became so comfortable they did not want to leave or move out where God wanted them to go, so here comes havoc. Philip went down to Samaria to preach the gospel. Note Philip here and, and, and his movement. Philip was not an apostle, neither was he an evangelist or a prophet. He was just a deacon, just a, just a church member per se. But he had the move of God or he had the pull of God on his life to go and do more. He went down to Samaria, which Samaria was an outside group of people, that Gentiles, that God told his disciples not to go through Samaria. But then he came back later and says, I must need go through Samaria. And here now salvation is coming to the Gentiles. And here in verse 3 of the 8th chapter, Saul having made havoc of the church. He was wasting it. He became so angry with these Christians. Seemingly he wanted to destroy them and injure them. Did not know the more you hit a believer, the more you get out of them. The more the enemy fights you, the stronger you become. The greater the test, the greater the testimony. You overcome by your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Here comes this havoc, speaking, seeking, praying to destroy them like a prowling animal. In the fourth verse of the eighth chapter of the book of Acts, the persecution here forced the believers out of the homes of Jerusalem. Spreading this gospel, now they go forth to do it. Sometimes we have to become uncomfortable before we move and do God's will. You may not have experienced it yet, but keep walking, and God will get you to a place where it's uncomfortable. Discomfort in some sense, because God is working through our lives and through hurt to bring about healing. All hurt is not bad hurt. Some hurt is good hurt. And God uses all things to work together for the good. Hmm. In hurt, we are tempted to complain, become very self-centered about what's going on. Let me get this out of my bed. Look at somebody say lot. lot. Let other people talk. Get rid of your lot. Don't let lot disencourage you. You're always going to have a lot around. But Abraham had to finally leave lot alone and let others talk. God might be preparing you and I for something special because of the pain that you are enduring. Watch this pain. Pain, pain is an unpleasant signal of hurt. It is complex, it's a complex experience that differs greatly. Each person has different types of pain. One person calls this pain, another calls it's, it's not that bad, but pain is pain. Even between the similar injuries that one will have, one would scream higher or louder than the other, but pain is pain. Pain can be very mild, almost unnoticeable. Pain also can be very, very visible. When you experience pain as you're going through the strain of it, the burden of it, it, sometimes it can shut you down because of the achingness of it. You elect to sustain or to be silent or you elect, you elect to speak up. Pain wears on you emotionally. Sometimes it quiets, quiets you and shuts your body down and calls you to center your actions.
actions on avoiding people at all costs. Pain is significant, it's important, it's the quality of life, it's about life, it advances us through pain. Physical and emotional pain will bring unsettled relationships within your life and within your family, coworkers and family and friends. You limit your mobility around people because you're going through pain. Pain, but not knowing, but now I'm seeing this morning, if there is no pain, there would be no gain. Psalms 119 and 71, David says it like this, my suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. I've learned obedience through the things that I've suffered because it taught me my troubles turned out for the best. In the Message Bible, it says, so I can focus to learn from, my, from your textbooks. I didn't learn this just by reading it, but I've gone through it with a personal experience. But had I had learned it through the textbook, I probably wouldn't have endured so much pain. But even in the midst of that pain, God had a plan for the pain. I wish I would have learned to slow down after I got my first ticket. <laughs> but when I paid it, I slowed all the way down. Some things you have to learn by experience. Some things you can learn from the textbooks, like I'm not going to do that. But I find myself in that school of hard knocks because I didn't read the underline of what I should have read before I made that mistake. Pain is something that God uses for his greater good. Everyone in here that if you don't have it, I'm going to introduce you to discernment. Discernment is that interior of that clock inside of you, this tick. That thing that tells you, oh, hold on. It's that inner self speaking to you saying, don't do that. Don't go there. That's the discernment. It, it doesn't speak loud until it's really, if it's, if, or, else you're in a, or else you're in a dangerous moment, it'll speak real loud. But mostly it's just that internal, like, no, don't speak to him. Just keep walking. Or if you're around people that you have an opinion about something, that, that internal clock will say, just be, just be quiet. But some of you go past that internal clock and say, oh, I got to just give them a piece of my mind. I got to tell them what's on my mind. I, gotta, I let them know. I, I, my mama told me, speak up. Well, this is not the time to speak up right now because you're, you're, not in a, you're not in a position to speak up right now. Husbands know it. I don't want to create my own pain, Dr. Francis. So every now and then I just say, yes. Yes, you are with there. To know not to increase that pain. But then if I'm, if I'm not thinking straight, I'm going to say, well, I got to just tell you. And then the other side get quiet. We, we're all right, Dr. House, I'm okay right here. All right. And the other side get quiet. And when she gets quiet, it's like, oh, Lord, it's going to be a long weekend. <laughs> I wish I could have learned from the textbook. I wish I would have learned from the textbook. Hindsight is always the 2020. If I can go back and not have done the things that I know I should not have done and just waited a little bit longer, I would have gained. But God uses it, it all. Genesis 50 and 20 is a, is a good example there in IV. He says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for, my, for good to accomplish what he know now is being, what is now being done. I'm reading the NIV to save many people. Uh, Joseph was speaking to his brothers and said, you intended to harm me. But God took what you intend to harm you with or to bring pain and bring about progress to save much people alive. Whatever you're trying to do to destroy me, God's using it to bring me up and develop my character and strengthen me. But without the pain, there would be no gain. Everybody can't talk to you about you're going to be all right. You haven't been through enough to tell me I'm going to be all right. It goes beyond just a little testimonial message, God, to get you through it. What you've been through lately to tell me God's going to get me through it? Here is a real witness that's on your road, sitting in this room right now, that can tell you that pain brings gain. Whatever you're going through, God is greater than what you're going through. Whatever people are trying to say, God is greater than what they are saying. And your life is about to go to a whole nother upgrade. Evil, you meant to harm me. Evil is wickedness, Joseph told his, brother, told his brothers. He says, I knew I had been prepared for this next level of pain. God took me to the stages of pain to get me to the palace. I went from the betrayal, I went to the prison, I, I went 
to the butler them forgetting about me but God brought me to the place where he remembered me and brought me to my rightful place leads me to the obedience and through my suffering that I understand God's hand is on every move of my life he will not put again on me more than I can handle God will in the midst of havoc bring about a harvest he will bring about a wealth through what you go through the results of man's intentions God overrides that for his greater good the results here is the gospel being preached. And the Bible says in Acts 8, 6 through 12, it says miracles and healings begin to take place. Because they moved on beyond the pain and the scattered abroad and began to preach the gospel. In the preaching of the gospel, miracles and healings begin to take place. In Acts 8 and 7, demons were cast out because of the gospel being preached. And later on in Acts 8 and 8, joy was in the city. But I want you to see also that many were baptized because the gospel was preached and they were filled with the Holy Spirit because the gospel was being preached. When the apostles, the Bible says, were in Jerusalem and heard that the Samaritans in Acts 8 there in verse 14 to 17, they were in Jerusalem because the apostles did not leave, but the others were scattered out of Jerusalem. They heard that from Jerusalem that the Samaritans had accepted God's message. They sent Peter, here we are, and John, and they went down to where they were. And as, they, as soon as they arrived, they prayed for those new believers and to receive the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Pain scattered them. Pain brought them to the rightful place. Pain called up Peter and John in Jerusalem, and they came down to where the Samaritans were. Peter later before, John before, when he's walking with Jesus, he said, Jesus, they're not with us. Call down fire from heaven and destroy them. He said, no, I'm not come to destroy men's life, but to save men's life. Now here they are in the book of Acts in this eighth chapter around verse 12 to 14, and they're laying hands on them and they're receiving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of the Samaritans, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you still here? Pain is stirring a revival. Pain is stirring up a move of God that never took in place had it not been for a havoc upon the church. The pandemic pushed us to something greater. It made us have our own personal prayer time. And we went back to have devotion in our home. Don't lose that, child. That pain brought you to almost being an evangelist. So don't lose that now. You were preaching more to yourself in that empty house than anybody else. So don't lose that now. Don't come back to church and expect the pastor to hype you up every Sunday. He said, I'm, I, I survived something. So I got my own word right here. Matter of fact, I'm preaching to myself this morning about how good God has been. Pain brings something and births something out of your life. Peter and John laid hands on, upon them, those that believed, and they received the Holy Spirit. We believe on the laying on of hands. Not that we're giving something, but we're agreeing and touching and believing God that you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit spirit. I've seen it work on numerous occasions where people that could not get a breakthrough, but I want the Holy Ghost came down, the minister at the altar, or the pastor lays hands on them, and so sooner or later, boom, they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in Mark 16, 16, you're going to speak with a new tongue, and you have power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Not that you're looking at walking out in this desert to find a snake or a scorpion. You can just go to your job and find a but the Bible says it gives you power to overcome snakes and scorpions, things that should have killed you. Don't look at me with that same face. You didn't walk past people who should have taken your life out. But God gave you power to keep on walking, even though they were stinging you with their words, you're still sitting here unaffected by their words that seemly to break you. He goes down here and lays hands on them. Peter and John, as they laid hands, they prayed. Prayed that the Holy Spirit would fall upon these people, and it did. This morning, I believe that God is sending the same voice in this house. I believe that God is moving in the same breath in this house. There's going to be a baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's going to be a fresh revival in the church because the church is being feeling the headwinds and the pushback and the resistance of demonic and satanic activity. But the more the devil push back, the more the church push forward. 
because the greaterness is within us than he that is in the world. Power to overcome the enemy is within you and I, but without the pain there will be no gain. And here the Bible concludes with us this morning that as they were moving and the Holy Spirit fell in that city, there was great joy. So you know, there was no joy before the Holy Ghost came. You want to see a joyful church, let the Holy Ghost start moving in the house. Let the believers start believing in the transformation of the power of laying on of hands. Now I don't know, I know some of y'all still in COVID zone, but put your hand on yourself and say, in the name of Jesus, I shall receive power. Now you don't want nobody else to pray for you, but if you don't have it, you don't have it. But if you don't have it, come and get it. This morning you can move and say, I need somebody to lay hands on me so I can receive power. Preacher, what do I need power for? So you can have joy. You don't have the joy you used to have, the happiness you used to have. You walk around more sadder than anybody I know. But the Holy Ghost did not come to make you sad. It comes to give you joy. That joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. Now hold on before I quit here. It was not joy just on one street, but the whole city of Mountaintop had joy. Everybody that came... Everybody in the room had joy. Isn't it something how joy moves down your road from one person to the next? And you ask the person, do you really have joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take away? That circumstances does not regulate my joy. Bills do not regulate my joy. Money does not regulate my joy. People do not regulate my joy. My joy is full and complete because he gave me joy. Joy, you can't buy it. You can't hack for it. You can't go around and try to get it off somebody. But once you get the Holy Spirit, Spirit, it comes with love, joy, and peace. If you don't have that triple thing in your life, something's wrong with you. If your joy is right, your peace is right, and your happiness is right. This joy you have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Put your hand back on your shoulders. I command joy to stir up in my soul. I command peace to stir up in my soul. I command love to stir up in my soul. Thank God for the newness of life. When the Holy Ghost came, demons began to run out the church. When the Holy Ghost came, people that were lame began to walk upright. When the Holy Ghost came, those that were sick were healed. If you're sick this morning, I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost that you be healed in the name of Jesus. It's in the room. It's in the airways. Receive it in the name of Jesus. No pain. Since the pain has come, I'm gaining. I'm gaining, I'm gaining, I'm gaining, I'm gaining, I'm gaining. Come on, give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Look at three people down this morning. Is your comeback and come up. Hold your hands up. I thank you, Father. Not for the thing, but in the thing. This pain has taught me how to love you better. I thank you that it did not take me out, but it only made me better. And I will let nobody regulate my praise because you could have left me where I was. But this morning, I am grateful. I endured the pain. Now I'm enduring the gain. Give God praise in the house, church. Quickly, I want to pray. If you're able to stand quickly, just please stand. If you're able to stand. If you're not, if you're comfortable sitting, you can stay seated. I'm not going to bother you too much this morning. But I'm looking for that person I was talking about when I first opened the service. And even you that might be among that, since Pastor House, it's me. It's so challenging in this moment. It's not an everyday thing that I have to face this type of brutalness and this type of havoc. No one, has to, no one has to know what you're going through, but my assignment this morning is to lay hands on you and to move you from that broken place to breaking through place. God wants to deliver you out of all of that. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver you out of all of them. Your ministry is yearning to break free. The enemy is trying to shut you down because of what you feel is disqualifying you. But God sent me this morning to say, tell you that I'm bringing some of this on to move you to your rightful place. You became too comfortable, too quiet, too silent. And I turned up the heat, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I turned up the heat in the furnace to let the devil and you know what you're made of. You're not going through this thing by yourself. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. And he need this gospel message preached throughout all the world, to all nations. And you're the voice he's going to use. You're the voice he's going to use. Look at your hands if you have this altar. Say, my hands will be laid on people to change lives in the name of Jesus. Look back at your hands again. Say, these hands have been anointed by God in the name of Jesus. Power. 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 Holy Ghost. 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 Power. That's all. Holy Ghost. Power. Holy Ghost. Power. Holy Spirit. Power. Holy Spirit. Power. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you now. Your grace is on this house and is on this altar. The believer has come with expectation. The pain is obvious, but God, I come to experience the gain this morning. I come to experience the breakthrough this morning in the name of Jesus. It did not come to destroy me, but it came to grow me up. So today I'm growing in my faith. I'm growing in my trust in you. I'm growing in my belief in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, fall fresh, fresh right here in the name of Jesus. Yes, here it comes. I'm not trying to make this up. I'm telling you what he told me. In the name of Jesus, just reach your hands up like you're pulling something in and say, I receive it. Come on, pull it in, pull it in. I receive it in the name of Jesus. In the name above every name. Come on, pull it down. Pull, 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 pull it. Pull it in. Pull it. Pull it in. Pull it in. I promise you it's falling right now. Pull it in. Pull it in. Pull it in. Yokes are being destroyed. Demonic forces are running out. The lame are walking again. Spiritually lame. Emotionally lame. Psychologically lame. You're walking again in the name of Jesus. Come on, Zion. Take it to the next level. Pull it in. Pull it in. Pull it in. Pull it in. In the name of Jesus. You said... You said, you said you'd never leave me. You said you'd never forsake me. You said you'd be with me. Whatever I got to go through, you said, you said, you said no weapon formed against me shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Take it to another level. Come on, pull it in. We're almost done. Yes. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it in the name. Jesus in the name of Jesus come on exercise exercise lay hands on your own head lay hands on your own head lay hands on your own head power power yeah God yeah God yeah God yeah God yeah God power shut up Increase, increase, enlarge.
enlarge, increase, enlarge, increase, enlarge. I made it. I made it.